Next one up is Karina Sanchez from Idaho State University. I'd like to draw everyone's attention to this bird here on the top left. This is a raven. And my guess is that many of you have seen this bird before. But did you know that it's one of the most intelligent animals alive and that it has the rare ability, like us, to problem solve? This bird is currently very common in Idaho and we get to see it all the time. But what if I told you that 50 years ago, this wasn't the case and that ravens were barely in Idaho at all? You see, when we build things like towns, roads, and other structures, ravens are clever enough to figure out how to use those resources for survival. This picture up top shows a raven using a power line pole for its nest, which is now a pretty common occurrence that you can see, for example, when you drive along remote parts of Highway 84, just right along the roads. As a result, increases in these structures across the landscape have caused raven populations to increase as well as reproduce in more areas. Unfortunately, this has been an issue of conservation concern because ravens are very effective predators and they are now present in areas where animals did not necessarily evolve defenses against them. So these animals are being consumed at alarmingly high rates, which hurts entire ecosystems. Wildlife managers have used a couple of strategies to reduce this effect, but they've had limited success so far. For example, lethal removal by hunting or poisoning ravens was not effective long-term within study areas because new ravens can easily take the place of exterminated ones, sometimes even at higher numbers. You see, the ravens that were exterminated likely claimed a part of that area as their territory and kept other passerby ravens out of it. And of course, there are ethical issues with killing ravens. My thesis is focused on a different approach to raven management, where in targeted areas, I'm coating raven eggs in oil, which causes them to fail to hatch. By keeping ravens from reproducing, we are first keeping ravens from adding new members to their population, but we're also removing the caloric demand that chicks normally place on their parents. And so we expect those ravens to consume less prey compared to ravens that do have chicks to feed. So why don't we just remove these raven nests? Well, oftentimes ravens continue to care for their oiled eggs, which keeps ravens in their territory, defending it, and keeping excess ravens out. It's kind of like tricking them into helping us. One of the many species that ravens are affecting right now are greater sage grouse, that big bird underneath the tortoise picture. Ravens consume sage grouse eggs and cause their nests to fail, which is really hurting sage grouse populations. So we're treating all the raven nests that we can find in our study areas with egg oiling and measuring changes in how sage grouse nests survive. So far, results have already shown a large increase in the survival of sage grouse nests. And that's been really exciting because at the end of all of this, we're really hoping to use these results to improve conservation strategies for ravens and all of the many species that they are taking a toll on. Thank you. Thank you, Karina. So um, when you talk about the areas that you're working on uh, mm -hmm. with this research, what parts of, where are you, work, what areas of the state are you conducting this research? I'm actually conducting most of my research in north central Nevada, but oh. also around the Great Basin, and then also in the eastern Sierra Mountains in California, which are so beautiful. So I feel really lucky to work there. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So what led you to, why did you choose those areas? Um, well, they have some sage grouse populations that I had worked with prior to graduate school. I was working for the US Geological Survey and then that kind of turned into a partnership with an advisor at Idaho State University um, to do a master's. So it was nice to continue my work there. That's great, that's great. And, and how long have you been doing this? Um, this is the second year of my master's degree, um, but I got to actually start working on this project a year before I started my master's degree. So I, I have a little bit more data, um, which is really nice. Yeah, it's always interesting to see how much time you've taken on this and you had to distill it down to three minutes. But um, yeah. thanks for sharing with us and good luck with your work. Thank you so much.